In a world where trials and tribulation exist, it is only normal as Christians to find a way to stand tall and thrive against all odds. That is why here on Divine Path, we teach Christians how to navigate the world today using the Word of God as their weapon. You're welcome to Divine Path. My name is Lilian Ogazi. And on today's show, we have um, a very interesting guest and a, a topic that is actually going to pique your interest. But do not go anywhere because right after the break, we'll get straight into our conversation for the day. Do stay. You are welcome back. Once again, this is Divine Path coming to you from Trust TV and my name is Lilian Ogazi. Now today, we'll be talking about the power of praying in tongues. Why should every Christian pray in tongues? Is it important? Well, with me today to talk about this is Pastor Ayodeji Ajapona. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's an honor to have you here. Same here too. All right, let's go straight into the conversation. The power of praying in tongues. Now, I remember before I started praying in tongues, it seemed like a very difficult thing to do. And I always wonder why people were doing it. And I've had conversations with people saying, why, why would you just stay and pray in tongues? How do you pray in tongues? How do you know how to pray in tongues? So let's just go straight now. Why do Christians need to pray in tongues? Thank you. Um, the first thing here we need to establish is, is it actually scriptural? Yes. And so I will say yes. Okay. It came out of the mouth of Jesus himself. He said to his disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says they should tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. Now, if you read that scripture, you'll be expecting to see power when that time comes. Acts chapter 2 tells us on the day of Pentecost, when the fullness of time was come, there was a loud shout, okay, and then the mighty rushing wind and the Holy Ghost came upon them and they all spoke in tongues. That's where it all started from. Before now, it was an instruction to say, wait for the power of God. Okay. When the power of God came, we saw tongues alongside um, that manifestation. And that's the first place we read in scriptures where people spoke in tongues. And if that was available to everyone then, then it's still available to everyone today. Okay, now I love the fact you started from there because let's just get back there now. Yeah. What exactly does the Bible say about praying in tongues? The Bible says... In the book of first corinthians chapter 14 that he does that's, that's when verse 4 he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself that's what scripture says about speaking in tongues it's a tool for edification for the believer if you go back to acts 16 you see that again in scriptures it says these signs shall follow them that believe and he mentioned four categories of signs to look out for in the life of a believer it says in my name they'll cast out demons in my name, they will speak with new tongues. If they take up any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Again, we see here, these are four vital signs that you can look out for in the life of the believer. Okay, so um, now you've mentioned the four vital signs. Now, what does it mean to speak in tongues? To speak in tongues is a supernatural endowment by the Spirit of God upon the life of the believer. It's a language in an unknown tongue first corinthians 14 says that we all pray in english in our dialect in whatever language that is known to everyone so when you pray in your normal um, language everyone can understand you as long as uh, they are from the same um, place or you know and all that but speaking in tongues is an utterance given by the spirit of god to the believer to speak a heavenly language um, Romans 8, 26 says that, for we don't know what to pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit helps our infirmity. That infirmity, they talks about shortcomings, to enable us to pray according to the will of God effectively. That's where praying in tongues comes in. So it's not something you learn. It's something that is given by the Spirit of God, you know, coming upon you and granting you utterance to speak in tongues. Okay, now, I love the fact that we've said speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. But before I get to that now, when I was doing my research, I saw that there was, is there a difference between praying in tongues and speaking in tongues? Praying in tongues, speaking in tongues are the same thing. Okay. Because when we speak in tongues, we are praying. Scripture says so. Okay. So, um, if you say speaking in tongues, if you say praying in tongues, it's the same thing. Both of them is a language of communication to God. 
-hmm. And prayer is making statements, basically. Mm -hmm. So if I say pray in tongues, if I say speak in tongues, we're saying the same thing. Okay, now, um, how then do I, is it this um, praying in tongues or speaking in tongues, is it a gift? And as a believer, how do I have access to it? It is a gift, okay. according to scriptures. Okay. It's the same way that righteousness is a gift, according to scriptures. Okay, we have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. In other words, scriptures tells us in the Old Testament that our own righteousness are like filthy rags before God. But in Christ, when we embrace Christ, he gives us the gift of his own righteousness. In the same way, if you go to 1 Corinthians 14, like I like to call it the tongues chapter, you see a lot there about speaking in tongues, about all of that. And then you will see there also that it is a gift given by God. Okay. And is this gift accessible to every believer? It is accessible to every believer. Again, when you look at the, uh, the scriptures, I keep making reference to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So it's, it's a brilliant idea or suggestion that people go and read the whole context there. Okay. You will see there it says, forbid not speaking in tongues. You will see there it says, I will that you all speak in tongues. So you will just see different things in that scripture telling you about speaking in tongues. It's available to every believer. If it's not available to every believer, Jesus will not say, these signs shall follow them that believe. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting situation in the world we live in. Mm -hmm. People believe in casting out demons. Mm -hmm. People believe in laying hands on the sick. People believe if you drink poisonous things, you can pray and God can deliver you from death, right? But when it comes to speaking in tongues, we have a different coloration or perspective to it. What is the fourth part of this package? The scripture says, these signs shall follow yeah. believers. Mm -hmm. If you are a believer, then you're qualified for to experience these four signs. Now, I love the fact you said if you're a believer, then you are qualified. So what then holds believers back from tapping into this and accessing this? So many things. One is ignorance. Another one is um, religion. Okay. You know, uh, my church doesn't believe in this. Or in our church, this is our perspective to it. Your perspective cannot change God's word. Neither can your perspective negate God's word. I have always said this if you want to get bible results go into the bible and see what the bible says about that situation then you can align yourself to it so people tell tell you things like oh um in our church we don't believe in speaking in tongues if you align to that belief you're never going to speak in tongues now again first corinthians 12 says now brethren concerning spiritual gifts i will not have you to be ignorant now, from 1 Corinthians, you see there in chapter 12 that it's addressing the ignorance of men. So ignorance can also be a barrier. Okay. Alongside the second part, which I said, uh, what you believe is what you get. If you believe that this is what your church disposition is about that, and you align yourself to that belief, you will not be able to you know, experience and enjoy this simple gift of speaking in tongues as it's stated in scriptures okay now like you clearly pointed out this is stated in scriptures so and it means all christians <coughs> beyond church religion and belief have to go back to the scripture to read this Absolutely. now would you say it's lack of interest in going back to the scripture to study or relying on their religious leader who have told them otherwise that is causing this interest is a tricky one here if you ask me mm. because you see everyone first of all is a child of god and our life is powered by the word of god so if you're not going to be interested in the word of God, then you're not going to deliver well when it comes to the affairs of life. So first, as a believer, it's you and your relationship with God. God. If you must understand God, you must study the scriptures. It's like buying a phone and then you throw away the manual and you want to operate the phone. You will go thus far. When you come to certain features in the phone, you can't actually deal wisely or enjoy it. So whether you're a member of a church or whatever, the important part here is, as a believer, you must and you should engage in God's word to know God for yourself and know who you are in Christ. All right. Now, um, before we go on a break, now let's take this question. I'm sure this is going to spill over because it has lots of branches now. How important is praying in tongues to a believer? It is very important. If it's not important, Jesus won't say these signs will follow believers. The way it is important to understand that we need, we will deal with demons on earth and we need power to deal with demons. The same way we know from scriptures, we'll meet the sick, 
we will need to lay hands on the sick for them to recover. The same way we see in scriptures that we will come to situations in life sometimes where you probably take up a deadly thing and put it in your mouth and then you need the power of God to deliver you. It's the same way. None of those things are any more important than the other. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. Now, I have lots of questions, but I'm going to hold my thoughts. Well, if you're just joining us, this is Divine Path coming to you from Trust TV. I will be going on a quick break. When we return, the show continues. Do stay. You are the God who silence is louder than thunder. Lifting you above the heavens is still like putting you under. Because our minds can't fathom the extent of your influence. We sing holy, holy, let it rise up like incense. You are God, you are not a man nor a mortal. You created the world by the words you utter. Your word builds my spirit like flesh and protein. When your spirit descends from on high like rain. I don't want you in doses, I need much more. Not just your back like Moses saw. I want to see all, all of you. Every day be more like you. Show your miss to be in all I do. Out of you I spring forth. You are my birth. Because I brought your life, I can never see death. Even if I tried, I can place no one above you. You are endless. What can never describe all of you? I worship you. I worship you. You are welcome back. Once again, this is Divine Path coming to you from Trust TV. My name is Lilian Ogazi, and with me today, I have Pastor Ayo Deji Ajapuna. Thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you. All right, now, um, before we went on break, we were talking about the power of praying in tongues, and we started the conversation on how important it is for every believer to pray in tongues. Now, I have this question now. Do I stand in a special authority with Christ if I pray in tongues and in the Holy Spirit? Things will work differently for you because, you see, when you look at scriptures again, mm -hmm. <clears throat> There are giftings in the lives of a, of a believer, apart from just speaking in tongues. And First Timothy chapter one, Second Timothy one six says that we should stir up the gifts that were in us by the laying on of hands of the presbytery. <clears throat> what that means is there are giftings on the inside of every believer. The best way I can describe this is just imagine you have a cup mm -hmm. and you have water. Then you have milo, you have sugar, you have milk, whatever it is. And then you stir it and then you leave it. After a period of time, it will settle. Now, if you come back after a long time, you could take that same drink and just start to drink. What you'll probably say is, it's not sweet. But you need to stir. Mm. If you stir, the mixture comes all together. Then it gives you that full flavor that you're expecting. When we speak in tongues, scripture tells us, we're able to stir the gifts that are on the inside of us for effective use where the needs arise. All right, now, the essence of this show, which I normally say, is to teach Christians how to navigate the Word of God using the world rather using the word of god as their weapon and we've talked about several topics and for every time i hear about um praying in tongues i see it as a weapon do you agree with me on that i agree with you because the bible says that um, he that speaks on a long tongue edifies himself mm -hmm. the best parallel to this is to look at a brand new phone or however a phone anyway there's no effective use of a phone if it's not charged it doesn't matter how expensive the phone is. If it's not connected to power, where it gets energy to deliver, mm -hmm. it's not going to work well. It's the same thing with the believer. When we pray in an unknown tongue, when we pray in tongues, 
we edify ourselves, we charge ourselves, we bring ourselves to a place where we're alive to God. Because when we pray, we're dealing with the Father of all spirits. Okay? Scripture says that he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. The word mysteries there are talking about hidden truths. The parallel runs with, if you look at, you know, basically what Nigerian movies and all that. People go to Habalist mm -hmm. to make their petition or bring their problems. The Habalist will switch from listening to them and begin to make what we call incantations. Now he's left you, he's making contact with the realm of the spirit to receive information, solution as it were, for the client who's come to him. So he's able to switch lanes from the normal relationship and talking in everybody's understanding. Mm -hmm. He switches to another language as it were, that helps him to access the realm of the spirit. And then he comes back with solution. Now that's an, uh, it's a similar though, a very poor example. Mm -hmm. When we pray in tongues, that's what happens. We're able to speak mysteries with our father. We're able to receive insight and instructions and information from God to deal wisely with the affairs of life. So if you ask me, speaking in tongues has a lot of advantage. It puts you in a place where you're energized spiritually. Your spirit man comes alive to God, to hear God, understand God, and flow with God. Okay, now, before we went on break, we had um, an earlier conversation where you spoke about, you know, with everything that comes with Christianity, there is always a misconception to it. Now, what is the most common misconception you've heard about praying in tongues that you would love to debunk? The most common misconception I've heard about speaking in tongues is people tell you that, oh, be careful what you go and receive. It could be from the devil. And I've heard that severally, you know. But you see, I always say this because I've, I've had people ask that question. Mm -hmm. Sir, this thing you're telling me about, mm -hmm. are you sure it's not a demonic thing because it's spiritual? Mm -hmm. And I always say to them, if your name is John and I call Johnson, you will not respond. Why? That's not your name. I always tell people, we reach out to the giver of the spirit, which is God himself. And the Bible says all good and perfect gift comes from him. So I always tell people, there is nothing like, oh, I'm speaking in tongues, it is, that tongues is not of God. If we received it from God, then it is of God. So the general misconception I hear is people saying that, hmm, that tongues is demonic, that tongue is not of God, uh, because you don't know what you're saying. They're just blabbing nonsense. That's, that's a new one. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard that one. But I know the ones I've heard, which I would love to throw in here, is um, people saying that um, I'm being forced to speak in tongues. It's not for everybody. Hmm. No one can force anything on you. Scripture says that, I, before, behold, I put before you life and death. You choose life that you may live. God is not a forceful being. And I've met people who said to me, I don't think I want to receive it now. And I said, there's no force. If you want to, our job as believers who speak in tongues is to show you or guide you mm -hmm. on how to receive it. And if you're not interested, no one can force you. But some people say that, ah, you want to force me. There's no force about it. You're a child of God. You're going to go to heaven whether you speak in tongues or not. It's not the guarantee or the license to heaven. Being born again qualifies you to go to heaven. Receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost is something that comes alongside. You can choose to accept it or not. So no one should force it on anyone because God is not a forceful God. And so just be guided that you should not be forced into it. If you're, if you're enlightened mm -hmm. or they show you from scriptures, then you're wise. You'll be wise to see God's word and take it. I'll give you an example. My mother was from a denomination that didn't believe in speaking in tongues. I got saved on campus. I came back home speaking in tongues. I went for a program in the church where they speak in tongues. I said, well, um, everything was fine except for that speaking in tongues uh, business. I said to her, mom, can I ask you a question? Your church does not believe in speaking in tongues. I am from the, I came out from that church also. But can we go back to scriptures and let's see what scriptures have to say about speaking in tongues? So she agreed with me. Mm -hmm. We went back to scriptures. From Acts of the Apostle, Day of Pentecost, we began to see common trends, how people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. Interestingly, she saw the light and she was like, oh, wow, I've always thought it wasn't for everyone. Okay, so every believer can speak in tongues. She received it by faith 
and she spoke in tongues till she went to be with the Lord. I think it's just a case of clear ignorance no, because absolutely. if you have total knowledge and understanding of it, then you have a problem. Now, let's get to the big question. I, I call it the big question now. As a believer, as a new believer, or even as a believer, how do I acquire the spirit of speaking in tongues? I really want it. How do I get in touch with that? All right. First things first, the Bible says that in the last days, I always say this when it comes to getting people to feel the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. So I always ask a question, are you flesh? If the answer is yes. Are you in the last days? If the answer is yes, then the Holy Ghost is already poured out. And I always say, if I stretch forth to you a phone and I say, I'm giving you this phone, what's your job? To receive it, yes? Mm -hmm. So it is there for us to receive. All right, believers are receivers. So the first thing is, you must understand that it is already given. It's available for you to receive. How do we receive? We receive by faith, by asking. The Bible said that which of you, if your, if your children ask you for fish, will they give them a serpent? Mm -hmm. All right? In the same way, if you ask the, for the Holy Ghost, he will give it to you. So I always tell people, now you know that your duty or your responsibility is to receive. And believers are receivers. So we go to the giver of the Spirit. We ask God, God, your word says, these signs shall follow them that believe. I'm a believer. This scripture qualifies me to receive. So I, I ask to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Once that is done, we pray, we yield to God, and there's manifestation. Okay. Now, um, the world is um, a very, very noisy place. And it's changing every day. I would say, since I received the Holy Spirit, I started speaking in tongues. I would say, I... I tend to see things differently and I tend to see lots of things happening in the world. It's getting so noisy now. What's your word out there to believers whom are still struggling with doubts, especially when it comes to using the Holy Spirit, the empower of praying in tongues as their weapon? We know that it's a weapon that every believer owns now. What's your word out there to believe on how to use that weapon in the world today? Um, one of the benefits of speaking in tongues is it brings your spirit alive to God. Mm -hmm. So I always say to believers, when you're faced with a situation, you're overwhelmingly you know in a situation and there's so many noise house rent school fees this one that one the list is endless i always say take out time right it's not a, it's not a, it's not about how long but just make up your, make create a habit where you spend time praying in the holy ghost when you do that one thing will happen it will suppress the voice of the flesh the noise around you mm. and it brings your spirit alive to god usually at that level, you start to receive instructions, wisdom, guidance on how to deal with those affairs of life. I'll give you an example. You're, you're overwhelmed with, let's say, paying your fees. All right? And then you go to God and you spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Chances are, 98% chances are, God will begin to put promptings in your heart. All right? What to do, where to go. And then these spiritual exercises brings you to what we call right place right time that brings about the manifestation that solves that problem that you would have been swallowed up in if you had just allowed you know the cares of the world and all that is you know buffeting at you to you know take a toll out of you okay let me just deviate a little now you spoke about i'm um, having the ability to listen now at this point does fasting help with trying to calm your head and listen to what god is trying to say and you no know, helping you boost and praying in tongues fasting does help okay now fasting doesn't make god work faster it doesn't make god change his mind on whatever it is okay fasting helps the believer because when you have not eaten and you're waiting upon god that's what fasting is yes and now fasting has different parameters cut across what people have been taught something is hunger strike you're fasting you're not eating you go about your everyday business you come back five minutes to six or 30 minutes to six o'clock and you just pray, you break your fast and say, I have fasted. No, fasting means waiting upon God. That means you shut down every other thing and you're focusing on God for the purpose of receiving direction and guidance. What fasting does is it slows your flesh because you're hungry, but it brings you to a, a, another consciousness that you're spending time with God and it has a focus. The focus is I want to receive from God. So what my noisy lifestyle wouldn't have allowed me to get in the field of fasting, my spirit is quiet. Sorry, my spirit is alive. My flesh is quiet. And I'm able to wait upon God to receive direction. Scripture says, 
they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary, and they will walk and not mm -hmm. faint. These are the benefits of fasting. Like I said, mm -hmm. fasting doesn't make God walk any faster. Mm -hmm. It's that man has been becladded by so many things. And when we choose to fast and wait upon God, we are able to put away all those things that have distracted us. And we're able to receive from God clarity on how to deal with the affairs of life. So, you know, I love the fact that you said fasting doesn't make God work faster because it means you might decide to go on hunger strike. If God Absolutely. decides that it's not time for your hunger strike, it won't provoke him just yet. Absolutely. All right. Now, finally, before we go now, what's your word out there to people who are still living in doubt in terms of the power of praying in tongues? Experience, they say, is the best teacher. Okay. I'll encourage people. Oh, sorry, let me cut you then before you get to go. What was your first time experience with the gift of praying in tongues? My first time experience. experience was the best teacher. I would love you to share yeah. that then. My experience was interesting. I got saved on campus at the drama village at a program. Now, for me, it happened to me in a way that is a little bit different from what people will say happened to them. While they told us to come out and then we came out and we led the sinner's prayer as it were, we got saved. While the person who was talking to us was sharing about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he had not finished talking about it when I found utterance from, you know, from within me, and I found myself speaking in tongues, you know, uncoordinated, that's the best way I can put it, an experience I can never forget. Now, some people may have it that way. Some people may have it with people having to show them and guide them step by step on how to receive it. But like I said, the experience is something you can never forget. It will stay with you. Okay. And so back to what I was trying to say, uh, for every believer who is born again, who, who has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'd like to encourage you, spend time praying in tongues every day. Uh, my, 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 my great recommendation is spend at least an hour praying in tongues every day. Ah, oh, one hour. Yes, an hour. If you can't do it at a stretch, you're walking around, you're walking down the street, pray in tongues. You're having your bath, pray in tongues. You're waiting for someone in, a, in, a, in an office, pray in tongues under your breath. One thing is sure. He that speaks in unknown tongues edifies himself. You're charging your spirit man to become more alive to God, more spirit conscious, more spirit led life becomes your story as you yield to the Holy Ghost praying in tongues. Yeah, I love the fact you made that emphasis of an hour because at times you feel like you've prayed and prayed and prayed and it's, I, I think I've reached one hour now and you look just two minutes. All right, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. It's been indeed a very, very educative episode. Thank you so much. And to everyone who just tuned in, well, unfortunately, we've come to the end of this program today. Well, do join us same time, same station next week as we bring something very interesting your way again. Do have a lovely day ahead.